Hi, this is the explanation of what the tilt test is, how it is done. A separate um, video will be done on why, um, and that's for another um, separate issue. So please go ahead and listen to both if you would like to hear the full story. In the meantime, I'm going to assume that your doctor has just recommended that you have a tilt test done and you have no idea what to expect. You've never even heard of it. You um, don't know anybody that's heard of it and you don't have n any idea what to expect. So number one, <clears throat> you should be asked to be uh, NPO, nothing per os, nothing for your mouth, it's all from Latin. Um, empty stomach from midnight the night before and walk in without any breakfast. Usually these tests are done first thing in the morning. Usually in a center that does a lot of these it will be like an assembly line. It will be like an assembly line uh, of people coming in and out one after the other in sequence, one right after the other. So yes, especially if you're a female, um, especially if you have been rejected many times um, because you believe that you have dysautonomia or they don't know what you have, you may feel like you are one of like a thousand people and you will not feel like you're extra special coming in to get this test. I'll warn you about that in advance because most people um, I believe do have a negative tilt test therefore they have to go through so many people to find one positive that it's really like they want to get you in, get you up, see if you faint, put you down, and then um, and then try a drug to increase your heart rate. Do the same thing, put you up, see if you faint, and put you back down again. So imagine this. You walk in. You're asked to change to a hospital gown. Change to a hospital gown. You're taken into the room where the tilt test is done. Uh, for me, it was a big room, a little bit cold feeling because the the equipment is really rudimentary. I felt like I was asked to lay on a Herman the Munster table. I got strapped, Velcro black strapping across my forehead, Velcro across my chest, Velcro across my abdomen, Velcro across my thighs, Velcro across my knees, and then you're laying down. So they say... Okay, we're going to start raising you up and you tell us, you know, if you're feeling anything. And they push a button and your table goes from this and it goes like this. And it keeps going, it keeps going up. Those of you that can imagine you're feeling a little more and more dizzy until finally you're strapped in and your head can't go anywhere. And you're all the way up. You're dangling. You almost feel like you're Jesus Christ on the cross. I'm sorry to say, but that honestly, that's just the best way that I can put it. You're up, you're dangling, and you, you don't feel very secure. Okay, so say nothing happens. Um, you feel sick, you feel like puking. They have a puke uh, container right there, ready, ready to catch your vomit if you, if you feel like vomiting. And then after X amount of time, this is a protocol that's all specified, then they lay you back down again. Okay? So you're, you're up and then you're laying back down again. So say nothing happened and you felt a little woozy, felt like throwing up, and here we go for the second time, okay? One protocol um, uses, and there are several protocols. If any of you are interested, um, you can do a reply video for me and, and tell me the different kinds of protocols that there are. Um, this one, the second time, we used isoprotyrenol as a continuous infusion in the IV that was already placed before going in for the tilt test. So, just backing up a step. You walk in, you change clothes, you lay down on a gurney. You get the gurney pushed into the tilt test room. It's a little surprising, but they open you up, they take, they, they, take their EKG pads and they place them all over your chest like a 12 lead EKG. There could be 12, um, uh, uh, 12 leads and so it's cold sticky tape gel kind of like stuff so men you, they might shave your chest um, and then they put an IV in. Then they, vel then they change you over to the table, velcro you on there and say okay we're ready to go. So you've been up and down one time you have the IV in, nothing happened, and you're ready to go up and down the second time. Now, the second time, they're gonna, they're gonna, you're starting out flat, 
And what they do is they use isoproteranol, which is a beta-1 agonist, for those of you who know medicine. There's different receptors. These are the receptors that, um, that can cause you to um, tighten up your blood supply. Um, I'm sorry, you're actually, these are beta ones and isoproteranol will increase your heart rate. Um, the alpha one receptors are the ones that squeeze the blood in your veins, in your legs, to keep blood going to your head. So, isoproteranol drip is going, your heart rate is beating faster and faster, and they start lifting you up again while your heart rate's racing. Well, why do they want your heart rate to race? Because that's what normally happens with dysautonomia. When you stand up, your heart rate goes really high. Why? Because your blood pressure is going down because you're about to faint, <clears throat> and the <clears throat> God made us so that we still try to get as much blood to the brain as we can. So on take two with the isoproteranol drip, it's probably a little bit more sensitive of a test in detecting a true positive uh, faint. So they get that in, your heart rate's beating faster and faster, they're lifting you up, they push the button, you're starting to go up, you're still Velcroed in, you're feeling sicker and sicker, and right about here I started saying, I see black, I'm going to pass out, and then they lift me all the way up to the top, <clears throat> and I passed out. At the same time for me, they actually did an, an echocardiogram at the same time with a big machine so that they put the gooey stuff and, and looked at my heart at the same time to see that it was basically pumping. My left ventricle was pumping nothing in it. So, um, so I passed out for 22 seconds and uh, they immediately, I guess, yeah, I, I was unconscious, they immediately lay you down once you start passing out. They count the number of seconds that you're passed out. Um, that's part of the test. For me, it was 22 seconds. And then um, they, all of a sudden, if you pass out, there's all these people around you. You forgot you even were there for a tilt test. And there's these people that seem like they're screaming at you to wake you up. They just want to make sure you're alive and, um, you know, reorient you to where you are. So it's, if you know, it's you, you will feel like you're going through a little bit of an assembly line, especially if it's a big institution that does a lot of these. Um, and that's good. It's, it's actually good. You want to be one of many, not one that they do once a year, okay? So if your test is positive, you will pass out, they will tabulate everything, and then you will go to the recovery room either way. In the recovery room, you may or may not get an orientation as to what exactly this means, whether your test is positive or negative. And then in the next video, I'm going to explain why the test is done and explain to you some of the particular idiosyncrasies of the test that makes the test not perfect, which is why some doctors are able to diagnose you just on your clinical history and they don't want to put you through a tilt test or they don't have a tilt test in their facility or they've never heard of a tilt test. So um, feel free to talk about your doctor and ask about tilt tests. All these, all the doctors, even your family care doctors, your wives, your children's, your pediatrician doctors, people, all the doctors need to know what a tilt test is so that they can have it readily available. Um, in case they, they need to know what it's for, in case they run across a patient that needs that done. For many doctors, they've never seen one patient, they've never seen one table test, and for many doctors, they never even heard of a tilt table test, okay? Let alone dysautonomia. So there, this is it in a nutshell. I hope it helps, and um, that's the procedure that I underwent. I can only speak for myself uh, to let you know what to expect. And on the next video, I'm going to explain to you the whys. Why, why do I get one and you don't? Why did you get one and it was negative? Why, you know, what does this test, how exact is it? Is it really what especially happens if it's negative after all this trouble and you thought you had dysautonomia. So we'll go into that and thank you very much.